Welcome. Good morning. This is the 36th District Democrats. We are delighted to be interviewing Debbie Carlson this morning for school board director position one. Over to you, Debbie, to introduce yourself and welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. My name is Debbie Carlson. I'm running for Seattle school board director. I am a parent of a first grader in Olympic Hills Elementary. I am an early learning educator and an advocacy consultant for Washington Communities for Children. As a former executive director of 10 years, I have created and managed budgets, advocated for systems of policy change at the state, city, and county levels. I'm an e-board um, director of the 46 STEMs, and I'm a former advocacy chair at Olympic Hills Elementary PTA and know the educational terrain in Olympia. I am running because the status quo is not working. We have declining enrollment rates, poor labor relations, another projected budget deficit in the next school year of 104 million, and we are failing our students academically. The district and board believe we need to close schools and disrupt students and families. I disagree. We should not close schools and we do not need to create another district crisis. I believe that Seattle Public Schools should be a place where all students thrive academically. I want smaller class sizes, higher academic achievement for all students. Our schools should be a place of safety and a place of belonging for everyone. In order to do this, I am running to increase transparency for the district, especially when crucial decisions are being made, to increase authentic community engagement and include students and communities most impacted by these district decisions. And thirdly, I believe representation matters to fully achieve educational justice. I am an out LGBTQ person and I want to be a strong LGBTQ voice on the board. I have been endorsed by the Seattle Education Association, MLK Labor Council, Seattle Times, current school board member Lisa Rivera-Smith, Teresa Mosquita, 32nd Dems. I would be honored to earn your endorsement. Thank you. Thank you so much, Debbie. Our first question this morning will be asked by Toby. And you get to continue your introduction. Why are you running for school board? <laughs> Well, like I said, I'm running because I, the status quo isn't working. We have a um, governance model of uh, lack of oversight. We have declining in, enrollment rates. Um, we have, uh, we're lacking, we, we are failing in academic achievement, especially for our students uh, furthest from educational justice. Safety is an issue in our schools. Um, the list goes on poor labor relations. I think that most people know uh, or maybe know that we almost had a strike this year again. Um, and according to, um, according to Seattle Emerald, the board seemed to be really taken off guard by this information and were not and didn't respond when they found out. Um, and luckily there is a tentative agreement thus far and um, the strike was didn't happen and, and school started on time. But we need strong, we need um, a district and a school board that will hold strong labor relations where they're not introducing a contract like seven days before the end of the contract. We need to not, we need to really hold our district accountable around this and ensure that all of our workers who support our students and their academic success um, are supported as well. I also strongly, right now the district and the board, that this current iteration of the board is supportive of possible school closures throughout the district. I am strongly against this. In fact, Dr. Jones even um, uh, was stated and was quoted in the Seattle Times that it is not a money saver, that um, closing schools, there won't be an um, economic benefit for the next maybe two to five years. It won't actually solve our current budget deficit and it hugely disrupts families and students and their educational success. We need change. We need new leadership. Thank you, Debbie. Our next question this morning will be asked by Barbara. Hi, Debbie. Um, so you can follow along in the chat for question two about enrollment. So enrollment in Seattle Public Schools has declined since 2020. And you've mentioned this, but what steps would you take, if any, to reverse this decline? 
Well, I want to acknowledge that this has been a trend and that um, the growing and, and growing decline um, of enrollment has been happening for years and that this is a tough issue, uh, but it must be addressed. And one of the things that I'm concerned about during this iteration of the board is there's not a plan around addressing it. Instead, there's just been reasons why they think it's happening um, and no actual action on reversing it. And in order to fully fund our schools, we need a board of action and vision. Um, I believe that one of the areas that we could look into is the two areas that we're actually seeing the decline is families not enrolling in kindergarten and then families um, uh, taking their children out between elementary and middle school. Um, two issues that I would um, recommend is really a stronger understanding and plan around early the connection of early learning um, and families that are coming it possibly coming into the system. Um, and so, for example, strengthening and and um, increasing our preschool and preschool developmental classes, uh, having and ensuring stronger relationships with early learning providers within the areas of our schools and having a more comprehensive uh, plan to really uh, provide strategic pathways for families with young children to enter into the school system and know that our schools are of high quality. Um, two, I think that we are really missing the boat when it comes to not asking families why they're leaving and what we could do better. That's a, a, a area where we could learn a lot about what is motivating families to leave and what we can do about it with not asking those questions. So those are really two concrete ways that I think that we could move forward to address the um, uh, enrollment decline. Thank you, Debbie. Our third question will be asked by Jeremy. How will you uphold the rights, dignity, safety, and inclusion of all students and what and what would be your specific focus to do so? Give me a minute, please. So um, let me just look at this question again, um, uphold right safety. Mm -hmm. So right now, you know, I. I absolutely, as a, as a um, possible elected school board member, I believe strongly that all students need to have a sense of belonging, that that is essential to academic achievement. It's an evidence-based approach, and I want to fully support that. And there are ways that the school district is not quite coming up to par around this. And I really want to um, come, come forth with a, with a board plan and, a, and vision around what we're doing, what we can do better. Um, there's a couple approaches that I think that would make school and students more safe, feel more safe and have a, a stronger sense of belonging. One is I think that ethnic studies, inclusive history, health, English um, and other subjects be inclusive of um, the and truthful in history and in, in teaching the diversity within all of these topics. Students deserve to be prepared for a, a diverse workforce when they someday are part of that workforce. And having a well-rounded education is part of that strategy. I also really believe that there needs to be strong um, professional development for educators and staff around racial and social equity. Um, and, and really setting educators up for success. I think that we absolutely need to support the diversity of um, our educators. So ensuring there's more educators of color in the hiring and in, um, in retention of educators of color. Um, and I think that when it comes to creating a safe space, we need to really engage in restorative practices um, and ensure that social emotional learning at all grade levels are happening um, and that we're um, supporting mental health services for our students so that they can go and, and access those services when needed. Thank you, Debbie. Our last prepared question this morning will be asked by Shep. 
Um, hi, you, you've already uh, addressed this a little bit, but you can address it some more. What are your thoughts on addressing the budget deficit? And if necessary, how would you approach deciding which schools to close? Hey, well, um, give me a minute, please. Well, one of the things that I want to be really clear is um, the currently the district and the this iteration of the board are moving forward a narrative that school closures will happen. I think that's a false narrative. Um, it I don't believe that we should close schools. School, closing schools has a huge detriment and disruptiveness to families and students. What we have learned in the past is that disproportionately um, communities of color are are impacted more with school closures, and this is not in line with our racial justice um, vision. And this is something that I believe strongly that we should not accept as inevitable, especially when we have the district such and also leaders like Dr. Jones saying that it is not the solution. Um, closing schools is not the solution to um, balancing our budget and even addressing our budget deficit. Um, I think that if there is an inevitability of um, school closures, that we are transparent about that plan. Currently, right now, there was this well-resourced um, school process of feedback, which was not transparent about that there might be school closures coming down the pike. I believe that students, educators, and communities have a right to know that transparency is important. And when we're not transparent as a district, when we kind of almost like go in a different direction um, with this well-resourced conversation, when it might be leading towards school closures, there's a level of distrust that happens and it's not actually addressing the issues that, that that we deserve to talk about and have deeper conversations around. So that, again, that authentic community engagement needs to happen if those decisions are going to be made and that people need to be brought into the process from the very beginning. It's really how we do this and it's okay. not being done well. We're going to move to follow-ups. Thank you so much. Let's see if we have a follow-up question from our e-board. Jeremy. Um. Yeah, my daughter just started third grade. Her class is 32 students that um, they cut one of the teacher positions at, at in her grade. That seems like quite a bit. Um, what, um, what will you do about class sizes and what are the impacts of having classes this large? Class, the imp, so as an educator, um, I know that larger classes make it absolutely more difficult for teachers to teach a high quality education and to have the resources um, that they need to fully um, support the diversity of students. And so what that story that you're talking to me about, Jeremy, is really concerning. And um, I, I'm sorry, this is really setting up students for a lack of success. This, this, the issue of, and the fact that the, the board is not even talking about how to address and get to smaller class sizes is hugely concerning. It's not even on their, they're, they're not talking about it in board meetings. It's not, it's not an issue. What I would like to do and what needs to happen, there needs to be stronger relationships with, with lawmakers, Seattle lawmakers. We need to have a pathway to build trust, which is about budget transparency, fiscal responsibility, in, um, leaning in a direction of the right amount of oversight of the district, which isn't happening in our current governance model. Hi. There's a lot to be done. Thank you. Toby? The, the, do you have any thoughts on the, the relationship between the school board and the city, the city council and other parts of the city in terms of 
where where housing is developed that accommodates um, low income or families even as opposed to small units. Well, thank you for that question. Um, one of the one of the reasons why um, it has been stated that there is a decline in enrollment is because of uh, gentrification, and also it's because the planning of housing is not geared towards multi-family units. So, and and other factors as well. Um, one of the, I have been asking those questions. I'm, I've am i been endorsed by the Washington Low Income Housing Alliance. I am, I have a history of being a housing uh, advocate. And I do think that the school needs to take a stronger approach and role within coalitions around housing and the development of affordable housing around our schools is a, is a strategy to increasing enrollment. And my understanding is that that, um, that relationship and that participation by the district and even by current board members is not happening. I would like to change that as, as a new board member. Thank you, Debbie. Laura Marie. Thanks, Debbie. Um, what I was wondering is if you would share something with us that maybe you've discovered along the way in this election or something about the school board director role that you think people might not know and or something that you are particularly interested in about the school board role. Good question. Um, what I'm discovering is as far as like a something that um, voters don't know about, what I'm discovering is that um, the way that the district and current board is talking about school closures is that it's inevitable. And where I'm, when I'm out in, in public talking to people, parents, voters often don't know that that's, um, unless you're an insider educational advocate, people don't know that that's possibly coming up. And um, I, I'm concerned about, I'm concerned about the lack of communication and the lack of transparency and community engagement around this really huge district decision and the impact that'll disproportionately have on communities of color within Seattle. Um, and that's something that I've been learning, just that lack, that, that lack of communication and transparency. Thank you so much, Debbie. I'm going to see if there is another follow-up from our eboard, a specific one. And if there's not, then give you a minute to share any, you know, you had a lot of deep and substantive um, answers for us. And so why don't we give you a minute to share anything further with us from one of those points or, or anything we didn't yet cover um, before we close today. So a minute for you to, to give some final thoughts. Thank you. Is this my closing or final thoughts? Well, it's, I mean, we're not going to have a closing. So this is kind of your last minute to share with us whatever you want us to think about. Um, if there was a point that we didn't cover, we, did, we don't have a formal closing in our interview. So this is your, your kind of option to give us whatever you want to share. Thank you. <laughs> Well, what I really want to share and emphasize is that the status quo is not working. We are failing um, students academically. There is a perpetual decline in enrollment rates. There are poor labor relations. There's another budget deficit coming down the pike next school year. And the board and um, the district want to close schools and disrupt families and students throughout the district. The answer isn't to, um, in closing schools, it's not going to save money, and we need new leadership that is willing to tackle these, these challenges. To achieve smaller class sizes, which I also share this value, to achieve safety and equity for all students in our schools, we need new leadership to shepherd the necessary and difficult change in vision and action. We need more transparency and accountability at the district level, authentic community engagement and representation on the board. And I wanna be a strong LGBTQ voice, supporting all LGBTQ students and all students. Students deserve school environments that support their full academic potential and achievement. And I hope Thanks. that 
will vote for change. I, and I hope that you will um, consider endorsing me. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll close the formal part of our interview now. And Jeremy will 